Radio TV Phono Nut here, and today I'm going to discuss something that some of you may find silly, but based on comments I see on Facebook, on YouTube, and even face-to-face -face conversations with people, it's something that we probably need to address, and that's how do you use your older television set in today's modern digital world. Uh, from the beginning of television broadcasting in the United States until June of 2009, there was a NTSC analog TV broadcasting available. And of course, in the early years, it was black and white, and then color came on the scene. But of course, the color broadcasts were backwards compatible with older black and white televisions. Well, starting in the late 90s, early 2000s, I recall hearing the talk about there would come a day when analog TV broadcasting would go bye-bye, and they gave their reasons for that happening, but I happen to think there were some more reasons behind that, which I won't go into, but anyway, they were running PSAs and everything else on TV, alerting viewers that NTSC over-the-air analog full-power TV broadcasting would one day go bye-bye, and then and then if you wanted to continue to use your old television, you would have to buy a converter box, or else you would just have to buy a new television with a digital tuner in it. Well, starting at about March of 2007, all devices that would normally contain a TV tuner were required to have both an analog NTSC tuner and a digital ATSC tuner and of course a lot of the VCR manufacturers got out of that loophole by got out of that by just uh, not including a tuner at all in their sets but even though there were a lot of PSAs on TV as far as what was going to happen and what you needed to do uh, that still went off of a lot of people's radar. I remember about two weeks before everything shut down, this lady called me, an older lady, because one or two of the local channels shut down a couple of weeks early, and she was just in a panic because she couldn't get 24 and 30 on her little 12-inch RCA black-and-white TV in the kitchen. So she came and got me. I went to her house. I checked her set out. I said, Miss Davis, there's nothing wrong with your television. It's They're doing away with the old analog broadcasting and switching to digital, and the digital broadcasting is not backwards compatible with older televisions. And she was just totally clueless about that. Now, I told her, I said, you can continue using your television, but you'll need a digital to analog converter box and I told her how to go about obtaining one. And she said, I'm not going to that much trouble for a black and white TV. You just take it with you when you leave. And I said, well, are you sure you don't want to keep it for the next couple of weeks while the other channels are still in analog? She said, no, just take it with you. But anyway, enough about that. Here's how you use an old school television that does not have a digital tuner built in it, whether it be black and white or color. This one here just happens to be a 15-inch GE black and white from 1981 with the old school mechanical tuners. Right now we have an antenna connected to the TV, and this is pretty much all you're going to get. You might get some digital noise. But that's about it. That's on UHF. And you can see we're getting some digital noise and such as that, but nothing nothing usable here. So, how do what do we do about that? Well, first off, there's a few things you're going to need. First, you're going to need an antenna. Now, antennas come in a variety of types, both indoor and outdoor. But do not be fooled with all this modern 
marketing hype to sell new antennas where they often refer to them as a digital antenna and claim that you must have a new antenna to receive anything. That is absolute BS. An antenna is an antenna is an antenna and as long as the antenna is in good shape then it's going to receive modern day digital broadcasting even if it is an old antenna. Here is an example of an old antenna. This is a UHF bow tie clipped onto a set of VHF rabbit ears that uses the 300 ohm twin lead and I have this on a little 13 inch set from 2007 that has a built in digital tuner and it does just fine. Now I live within the city so I can get all of the local stations okay with rabbit ears However, if you live in a remote area out in the county away from a TV station, then you're probably going to need an outdoor antenna of some description. The digital signals are a lot harder to pick up than the old analog signals were back in the day. You might could pick up an analog uh, TV station from 100 miles away. The picture might not be that great, but at least you could still get something. With digital it's either all or nothing. Once that signal level drops below a certain point, then all you get is nothing at all or a pixelated, unusable mess. So, so you need to determine what type of antenna you need. And I believe there's some sites on the internet where you can enter in your location and it will tell you what type of antenna is best for your area. And there are some areas that are so remote that even with an outdoor antenna it's hard to receive anything and in such cases then you're pretty much going to be out of luck and that was one of the disadvantages of digital. A lot of people who lived in extreme fringe areas could still receive some sort of analog broadcasting but then when everything went to digital, they were left in the dark, so to speak. Alright, so now you have your antenna. So, what do you need next? Well, you're going to need a digital to analog converter box. Here is an example of a digital to analog converter box. This is a digital stream model that I bought back in 2008 or 9 when they were first switching over to digital and it's worked flawless for me ever since. Now you may be asking where can you obtain this converter box? You might get lucky and find one at a local retail electronics store but they're going to be few and far between because after all they don't want people buying converter boxes to use their existing old school televisions. They want to sell you a new television and with the prices of TVs being so cheap today then most people are just going to opt for buying a new television. But you may be somebody that for whatever reason you like your old television, you're a vintage electronics nut like me and so many others are and you want to keep using it. But if you can't find one locally then they are still available on the internet, eBay, Amazon, places like that, and believe it or not, these boxes are still being made. However, with that said, the quality of these DTV converter boxes is all over the place. Just based on my personal experience, the best quality boxes that I've had are the Zenith Box DTT901, I believe is the model number. And it was also sold under the insignia Best Buy House brand. Now these are boxes from the early days of DTV only broadcasting. So the Zenith Insignia box, Zenith R Insignia box are both decent. They were both made by LG. The Digital Stream box that I just showed you, that's a decent box. And Channel Master also made a decent box. Now again, we're going strictly on my experiences. There was a Magnavox and a Philco branded box that were both made by Funai. 
those boxes do okay and they seem to hold up but they don't appear to be quite as sensitive as the uh, as the boxes that I just mentioned I've had a couple of Apex branded boxes those were junk that usually burned up in short order and they didn't perform all that well when they worked so I wouldn't recommend one of those the RCA boxes I've had a couple of those in fact I just threw one in the trash because it just didn't work very well and let's see what else there are some newer boxes that actually have the ability to record off the air content on a USB drive as well as playback material recorded onto a USB drive I can't really speak much for those I did buy a cheap one off of eBay it was about 25 or 30 bucks in my opinion it wasn't that great of a box but uh, and I ended up junking it too it just finally bit the dust and that was the end of it of course there's always if you don't mind getting out and looking there's always yard sales estate sales rummage sales that sort of thing and these boxes often turn up at those places but if you get a used box somewhere try to make sure you get the remote control that's supposed to go with it because most boxes you cannot program the box or do much of anything except change channels and turn it off and on unless you have the remote control to go with it so now you kind of have an idea where to get a box now what about connecting all this stuff up alright I will get the box here and I'll show you what we have on the back here now if you look on the back of the box you'll see a multitude of connectors and a little switch here going from left to right we have our antenna in that of course is where your antenna connects to the box and then next to that we have another coax connector out to TV there will be a cable that connects from that jack to the antenna input on your television set and then this little slide switch is where you select between the output of the box being on channel 3 or 4 and if the switch is on channel 3 of course your TV should be tuned to channel 3 and then if it's on channel 4 then obviously your TV would be on channel 4 or if you have a television that has the red white and yellow AV input jacks on it you can also uh, use those jacks to connect to your television and not worry about the RF output jack but so many older TVs do not have the red white and yellow jacks that didn't really become a thing until the mid 90's before that it was used on certain higher end sets but it really didn't become a become standard on most TVs until much later alright so what about hooking your antenna to the input of the box if your antenna, which by the way this one is just a little cheap pair of rabbit ears that contains VHF and UHF in the same package, this antenna has a single coax connector and if your antenna has that then of course all you have to do is screw it on to the antenna input connector on your box. However, if your antenna is of the old school type with this 300 ohm twin lead then you're going to need what they call in this case a 300 ohm to 75 ohm combiner this here has obviously your two screws for your UHF antenna the bow tie and then two screws for your VHF antenna the rabbit ears and then we have a male connector here that slides onto the coax connector input on our converter box so now we have our antenna situation under control now how do we connect the converter box to the television if your converter box was bought new then it probably comes with a cable similar to this but if it doesn't these coax cables are available at most any electronics store that's halfway worth their salt so you have the antenna connected you now have the antenna connected to your box so you will take your 
coax cable and connect it to the output to TV jack on the box like that and then you will connect the other end of this cable to your television set which may present another challenge or two which I will now demonstrate. Now most television sets made over the past 30 years have a single 75 ohm coax input for both VHF and UHF reception and if your set has that then you're all set. All you have to do is plug the cable from your converter box either screw it on or just slide it on whichever type of connector it is and you slide it on over this connector here and you're all set. Nothing more to do there regarding the antenna and connecting to your television. However, many older televisions do not have a 75 ohm coax connector. Instead, they'll have screw, screws for connecting 300 ohm twin lead. In some cases, you'll have two screws for VHF and two for UHF, but this one here uses two a uh, single pair of screws for both VHF and UHF. Obviously you can't connect a coax connector to that, so what you need is what's called a 75 ohm to 300 ohm matching transformer or Balin, and you can still get those at any electronic store that's worth their salt, or you can order them online. And when connecting one of these matching transformers to a television, you want to use the screws designated for VHF and if there's any internal antenna connected to those screws, then you want to disconnect it. All that should be connected to the VHF screws is your Balin or matching transform. Now it's also worth mentioning before we go any further that the quality of these matching transformers and the quality of your interconnecting cables also varies a great deal. You've got good quality matching transformers and cables and you've got cheap crap that's going to result in a likely going to result in a noisy picture so try to get decent quality stuff and stay away from the cheap low quality knockoff stuff that's often sold on eBay and Amazon and places like that. Alright now that we have our matching transformer attached to the VHF antenna terminals on our TV then we will take our box and connect the cable from the output to TV down here to the input to the 75 ohm matching transformer which is connected to our television set and then of course we have our antenna connected to the antenna input on the box and then we plug our converter box into an AC electrical outlet and our TV into an AC electrical outlet obviously and then we set the channel selector on the TV to whatever output channel your box is set to. In my case, it's channel 3. So there it is on channel 3. And now we turn the box on. And you can see the welcome screen there. And then the box will boot up. And then you will see... Well, in this case you will see programming because this box has already been programmed. However, if you've gotten a new box or a box that came from an unknown location or a box that maybe hadn't been used in years, then you're probably going to need to program it. And to do that, you're going to need the remote that came with the box and there should be a menu button on the remote and you press the menu button and you see we have a menu come up and we go over to input selection and then go down to where it says channel scan and then hit the right arrow go over to where it says select hit OK and then it gives us an, op update, an option to either update or do a total rescan so we'll just do rescan and hit OK and then it will automatically run through its program and then as it finds a channel, it will show them here in this little block here. And I think we'll get about 25 channels in my area. Sometimes at night, there's a religious station I can pick up that adds about five more channels. 
and then there's channel 22 out of Hattiesburg that adds about four or five more channels and I've even picked up WLOX out of Biloxi a time or two and WDAM7 out of Hattiesburg I feel like if I had an outside antenna I could probably pick up all of these channels more often and probably then some I'd probably have at least 40 or 50 channels if I had a good quality outdoor antenna but that's that's really not real high on my priority list most of what I watch is uh on DVDs and tapes anyway I don't watch a lot of over the air TV except for the news the propaganda I should say uh, we have some channels that show older programming but all of the commercials that are involved just drive me over the edge I've got spoiled to uh, watching a DVD that has no commercials in it alright so the scan is complete so let's hit the menu button hit it again and there we go now one thing you might find out most programming today is formatted for a 16-9 ratio to fit on a flat screen television whereas these older TVs are 4, four to 3 ratio 4 by 3 format but these boxes do have are the good ones anyway like this one has a zoom button you can press if you'd like to fit more content on a screen alright we have that option we have 16.9 option that gives us borders at the top and bottom this one also has a 14 by 9 option that gives us smaller borders on the top and bottom and then we have zoom and then we have this right here and I usually just keep it on that but there are some times when I need to see the whole screen like if I'm looking really close at the screen and want to read the weather I'll just put it over here on 16.9 and I can see what I need to see and then we'll get it back to this here but for most viewing this setting here does just fine so for most viewing I just keep this on the anamorphic setting unless I really need to see something that gets cropped off on that setting now another helpful hint when programming channels you might have to try the antenna in different positions and in the case of an outdoor antenna you might have to point it in different directions that's why I particularly like this box where when you program the channels it gives you the option to either update which keeps the channels that are already programmed and adds new ones or you can just do a total rescan where it starts over from scratch and deletes everything and starts over and a lot of boxes don't give you that option uh, something else you might want to do is connect a DVD player or a game console to an older TV like this but obviously something like this doesn't have the red, white, and yellow AV input jacks. So what you would need is a device called an RF modulator. What this does, this takes the composite video and audio input from a DVD player or a game console and converts it to RF channel 3 or 4 output that can be used by your television. Now I'm not going to hook this up for the sake of time but you would simply run the output of your converter box to the input of the modulator and then the output of the modulator to the input of the TV and set the channel switch output channel on channel 3 plug the modulator into an AC outlet plug the red white and yellow into your DVD player or whatever and this particular modulator whenever it senses a signal to these input jacks here it will automatically switch from RF pass through to the DVD player or whatever you have plugged into it now another helpful hint in the case of televisions with a mechanical tuner if you first connect it up and your picture is lousy try adjusting the fine tuning control on your television and the fine tuning control is the big knob that's 
located behind the main channel knob. Now, some televisions have what they call a bare actor tuner, which is like a a 12 position tuner and you can set each button to whatever channel you want to. In that case you need to make sure one of your buttons is set to channel 3 or 4, whichever your converter box uses. And that can only be done by connecting the box to the TV and turning it on and just setting whatever channel position until you get a, get a clear picture on channel 3 or 4, whichever channel you need. All right, now I hope this clears up everything. This just goes to show you can indeed still use these older televisions with a little finagling. So don't throw out your old TV because you think it's unusable. Now one more thing. The little portable battery operated TVs, I know many of us collect those. Those are your biggest issue. Obviously on those you can no longer use them as a carry around TV and run it off of batteries and just walk around with it wherever you want to go and watch TV because there's no analog broadcasting. So about the only way you can use those is if they have an external antenna input and I think many of them do. Some will have the standard 300 ohm twin lead input and then others will have a 1 8 inch input. And in the latter case you'll need an adapter that will convert the 1 8 inch plug to a uh, standard 75 ohm coax F connector. And then of course you would just connect the DTV converter box to the TV just like you would one of these types of sets. But like I said, it's no longer usable as a portable set that way. And I've done that with some of these little small sets I have, but mainly just to see if the TV would still work because let's just let's face it, I really don't care to try to watch TV on a little three and a half to five inch screen. And and I realize in today's world they make uh portable uh, televisions that are battery operated that have DTV tuners in them but they don't seem to be that common and most of them don't work all that great. Now in closing I know a lot of people were just itching to get rid of their CRT sets and replace them with flat panel TVs but I also have to wonder how many people who had CRT based televisions were perfectly fine with them and threw them out so they could buy new televisions only because they thought there were no way there was no way to continue using the older CRT sets and that's what's really sad because like I said earlier even though they ran all kind of PSAs during the digital transition there were still lots of people that for whatever reason didn't catch on and like I said I'm sure there were tons of CRT sets thrown out because people genuinely thought they could no longer be used. Okay, let me go into more detail about something that I probably should have gone into more detail about earlier. Let's say you connect everything up to the television and you have an unsatisfactory picture. So you have snow or streaks or dots or any number of things that detract from the clarity of the picture don't condemn the television just yet. Uh, the first thing you do if your TV has a mechanical tuner try the fine tuning knob and see if that corrects the problem. If it doesn't uh, try a different connecting cable between the converter box and the television itself and if you're having to use a 75 ohm to 300 ohm matching transformer try one an another one of those if you have one on hand. If none of that fixes the problem, try moving the converter box as far away from the TV as possible. Some of those converter boxes are not well shielded and sometimes noise from the switching power supply can make its way into the television. And then if that still doesn't work, if you happen to have another converter box on hand, preferably one that's a different brand than what you currently have, try connecting that to the TV 
and see if that improves the situation. If none of that improves the situation, then you likely have a fault with the television, most likely with the tuner or the antenna isolation network between the antenna terminals and the tuner, or you could have an IF issue with the television, but that would all need to be taken care of by a technician if you're unfamiliar with troubleshooting such circuits. Now as far as digital TVs go, digital TV broadcasting, they do have, it does have its advantage. As in right now we have basically a crystal clear picture and we can also get numerous sub-channels on a single carrier. For example this one here we have eight different channels coming in on channel 24 which is something you could not do in the analog days. Now the main disadvantage to digital broadcasting is like I've already pointed out earlier it's all or nothing nature and in the fact that it's harder to pick up than old school NTSC analog but I mean yeah I miss the days when I could just plug in a TV and turn it on to channel 11 and pick up some kind of signal just off of the antenna terminals on channel 11 but today you can't really do that anymore in fact this TV <laughs> This TV sort of looks like it's on life support with the converter box and the antenna sitting on top of it, but if we want to use the television, then that's about our only option. Now switching gears for a minute away from this DTV signal and old school TV thing, uh, I'm a member of several vintage TV groups on Facebook, and last night I dug up a picture of an old RCA 12 inch black and white set. I still have the TV, it's just buried at the moment. And that picture happened to have a screenshot of something having to do with Donald Trump on it and I posted it on that group. Not meaning for it to go political, it just I uh, me I meant for I meant for everybody to focus on the television, not the content on the screen, but you wouldn't believe the number of people that went crazy over the fact that it had something to do with Donald Trump on the screen and now I'm sure all of those people will now have to go sit in their safe space for the next six months while they recover from that wretched image on the TV screen. I'm glad I'm capable of, for example, seeing a television in a vintage TV group and focusing on the TV itself and not letting the content that might be on the screen get under my skin. In other words, I can see content on a TV screen that I don't go along with and I can keep silent about it and keep the uh, discussion based on the topic of whatever group it happens to be posted in and I don't feel like I need to go sit in my safe space for the next six months to recover from seeing it, but a lot of people just look for stuff to get offended by, and quite frankly, I'm getting fed up with it. So with that said, that particular TV was probably the, 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 main, the main TV picture that I posted that got the most reaction, but not because of the TV, but because of the content, and personally, I don't give a flying flip if you like Donald Trump or not. It makes no difference to me. But, you know, you see something on social media or whatever, if you don't agree with it, just shut up and keep scrolling. But a lot of people don't have that ability. I know somebody now who will go in a business, and if they see something Trump-related, then they go off on a tirade about what a horrible person he is and I've told him you need to stop pulling that crap you know when you go in a business you go in and take care of what business you're there for and you don't worry about any political signs or posters or books or whatever that you happen to see that don't sit well with you 
And he's like, well, I, I happen to think he's a terrible man. All the things he did to this country, I'm so, that, that's great. If you think he's a terrible man, that's your business. That's your right. But there's a time to open your mouth and a time to keep silent. And when you go to somebody's house or go in somebody's place of business and see see a political sign for Donald Trump or wherever, just shut up. There's no need in opening up that can of worms. They've got their opinions about him. You've got the you've got your opinions about him. Leave it at that. So there you go. I hope I hope this cleared up some things for those of you who are unclear as to how to use these older television sets. And pretty much the possibilities are endless. If I wanted to make this TV look like it was really on life support, I could get a, you know, an HDMI, the composite converter, and use, you know, like a Ruko box or any kind of whatever hooked up to this TV through a HDMI, the composite converter, and then through an RF modulator and you know, but I don't really have much desire to do that right now. Might one day, just out of curiosity, but I get enough content over the air and what I've got on DVDs and tapes to to satisfy my limited TV watching. So there you go. I hope you got something out of all of this and more to come later. Now one other thing I suppose I need to touch on Every time I think I'm through, I think of something else I need to add. How do you know if you have a later CRT set with a built-in digital tuner, which means you won't need a converter box on such set? Well, number one, look at the date on the back of the television. If it was manufactured March 2007 or later, then it should have a DTV tuner. However, there were some larger screen sets 27 inch and above that I think were required to have a DTV tuner sometime starting in 2006 and then by March of 07 it was made mandatory and everything that Toshiba branded Orion built 27 inch set that we fixed a while back I think it was made in October 2006 and it has a digital tuner in it alright now also, sets with a digital tuner in it should have the SDTV mark on the front somewhere like this. You see this says SDTV tuner. I know the Toshiba set doesn't have that exact marking, but it says on the front Theater View SD. So that tipped me off that it probably had a digital tuner in it. And then once I connected an antenna to it and went into the menu, it was quite obvious that it had a digital tuner. Now you might also be wondering, when were the last CRT sets made and marketed for the USA market? I really don't know the exact answer to that, but I do recall seeing some as late as 2008, 2009, maybe 2010, but I don't really think there was much after about 2010. The last CRT sets I remember seeing for sale in Walmart were those, uh, they had a couple of little 13 inch sets like this, and I remember them having one of those kid themed Disney TVs, it was a 13 inch set, which cost about $100 more than your average garden variety 13-inch TV just because it was a Disney-themed set. And I also remember sometime around 2010 or 2011 going in Walmart and they had a whole end cap stacked to the hilt full of those 27-inch Sansui sets that they had marked way down because they wanted to get rid of them but as I recall everything else in the store by that time was a flat panel set so we're going to say probably 2010, 2011 at the very latest was probably the last of the CRT sets being offered in stores now I'm told that in some parts of the world there's still CRT sets being made but from what I'm told, those are often made using recycled guts, especially picture tubes. 
I know in the early to mid 2000s there was a 20 inch Deer brand set which was Walmart's house brand. Most of the Deer brand sets were made by either Funai or Orion but this one I don't know who made it. It was made in China. The chassis still used a through hole ICs and the picture tube was a Hitachi. It looked like something you might see in a computer monitor. I've had several of those sets and every one of them had about the worst color picture that I've ever seen on a TV. Those things made a worn out 1970's GE look good. Now the Dura brands that were made by Funai and Orion, those always look decent but not that 120 inch set that I described. Now as far as later CRT sets, I've got this little one from 2007 and I've got that 27 inch Toshiba from 2006. I guess you could say those are from the later years and I guess it's worth keeping a couple of the later models around just for historical reasons, although I really don't get off on later black plastic crap TVs as I mentioned in a recent video. I just threw four away and found a church that would take the other three simply because I couldn't sell them, couldn't give them away, and really don't have the room to stash them here. So what else do you do?